Ready? Okay. We'll now call the City Council regular meeting to order for October 24th. Please rise to the invocation and pledge of allegiance. The invocation will be given by Councilwoman Brittany McGuire. Dear Lord, thank you for this evening. Thank you for everyone who, who has come out tonight to help participate. And Lord, give us guidance and wisdom as we go through the agenda this evening. Help us to make wise decisions. And Lord, I'm asking for your protection and for your help for each and every one of us and our family and friends. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, you'll please call the roll. Yes, sir. Councilmember McGuire? Here. Councilmember McHugh? Here. Councilmember Taylor? Here. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Here. Mayor Anderson? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Item number four, we have a request for road closure for the Fall Festival and Trunk or Treat. This will be from Union Church. Do we have Tracy with us tonight? Or anybody from the Union Church? I don't see Tracy. said she was going to come, but I can cover it. All right. Uh, they got this to us a day or two after our last, or your last meeting. That's why it's a, a real late one here. But they're asking for the street to be closed. North Butner, but Butler between West Pleasant and Robert Brett Street, all that property in between zone, both sides by the church. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't bother anybody. Um, and it's from four to six. Okay. Any other questions about the road closure? And there she is. Okay. Do we have any questions for, uh, for Tracy? I think everybody kind of knows what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? Yes, I make a motion. We approve uh, item number B4, the road closure for fall festival truck or treat. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions? No, we'll call the roll. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McCure? Yes. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Good job, Tracy. You got what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> no Thank problem. Thank you for doing it. All right. Up next, we have item number five. This will be proclamation for World AIDS Day, December the 1st. Jerry, you want to? Okay. Whereas worldwide, an estimated 38.4 million people are living with HIV and an estimated 1.5 million new infections occur in 2021, which is an estimated 4,100 new infections every day. And whereas worldwide, 15% of persons with HIV, PWH, don't know their status and only 75% of PWH who know their life-saving anti anti-retroviral uh, therapy uh, are currently assess assessing their those medications. And whereas the global spread of HIV necessitates a worldwide effort to increase communication, education, and action to stop the spread of HIV. And whereas the Joint United Nations Program on HIV slash AIDS observes December 1st of every year as World AIDS Day and leads and inspires the world to achieve its shared vision of zero new HIV infections, zero discrimination, and zero AIDS-related deaths. And whereas the 95-95-95 ambitious goal plan, global plan, plan to help end the AIDS epidemic has set its target for 2030, that 90%, 95% of all PWH will know their HIV status. 95% of all people with diagnosed HIV will receive sustained ART, and 95% of all people receiving ART will have viral suppression, and whereas clinical evidence has firmly established that PWH who, who achieve and maintain an undetectable viral load by taking ART daily or as prescribed cannot sexually transmit the virus to others, and this is known as undetectable equals un untransmittable or U equals U, and whereas the World AIDS Day theme in the United States for 2022 is ending the HIV epidemic, equitable access, everyone's voice. And whereas in Highlands County, more than 292 pe persons are living with HIV and community prevention networks and community-based organizations such as Campbell Health Solutions, Elaine May Campbell, 
through collaborations and partnerships are working together to renew HIV AIDS awareness and to expand and strengthen the lo local effort to stop the spread of HIV in Highlands County and or on World AIDS Day. Now, therefore, I, Garrett Anderson, Mayor of Avon Park, do hereby proclaim World AIDS Day on December 1st, 2022, and urge all residents of the city of Avon Park to take part in activities and observances designed to increase awareness and understanding of HIV AIDS as a global challenge and urge residents to join the global effort to prevent further spread of HIV AIDS. Thank you, Jerry. I think you have officially earned your night's keep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Item number six, we have an event request for annual Jingle Bell Run with road closures to be for the Jarrett family. Standard issue, um, similar route to uh, what they've done in past years. Yeah, this would be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Is there any questions on this event? Seeing none, is there a motion? We make a motion we approve item number B6, the annual Jingle Bell Run and Road Closure. Okay, we second. have a motion. We have a second. One last call for questions. Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Uh, just a point of clarification. Who made the second? I did. Thank you. Shelly. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McCure? Yes. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item number seven, we have the minutes from October the 10th, 2022. It's from the City Council regular meeting. Be looking for a motion. Going once. I'll go ahead and make the motion um, to approve the C7 agenda minutes for October 10th. Very good. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions or changes? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McCure? Yes. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number eight, we have a public hearing. This will be the second reading for ordinance number 17 2022. Ordinance of the City of Avon Park, Florida, amending the Avon Park Unified Land Development Code, amending regulations for home based businesses. Specifically, amending Article 7, Section 7.10.00 concerning home occupations, and amending Article 2, Section 2.02.08, and re Section 2.02.09 regarding employment within group care facilities, and amending Article 9, providing a new definition for home occupation for consistency with Section 559.955 Florida statutes regarding the regulation of home based businesses in the City of Avon Park. Providing for severability, provide for codification, provide for an effective date. Okay. So as I said, this is the second reading. So this will be a public hearing for ordinance number 17-2022. Anyone from the audience wishing to speak on this ordinance can now do so. Yes, ma'am. Please give your name and address for the record and then ask your question. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. I'm Stephanie Von Paleski Bush with the Central Florida Regional oh, Planning Council. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize. So no, it's fine. <laughs> um I can give you the spiel again, or I can stand for questions. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, the council is probably all familiar with what this is. Um, but if anyone from the audience has any questions, I would invite them to speak. Seeing none, look like you got off easy tonight. <laughs> okay, so the public I, hearing. I have one question, if you don't mind. This has nothing to do with like, home child care does it this is just mainly for uh, adult care and the paragraphs mm -hmm. it doesn't say anything about like you know having uh, small kids or like you know, right so that's that's also part of a you know being a home-based business so all right. the other rules would apply so that's also available in this mm -hmm. okay that's what i wanted to know thank you mm -hmm. yep. okay so right. public hearing for ordinance number 17-2022 is now closed is there any further questions from the council? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve item D8, uh, ordinance number 17 2022, please. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please call a roll. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McCure? No. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. 
Item number nine, this will also be a public hearing and a second reading for ordinance number 16-2022. Ordinance to amend city code section 2-33 of the city code increasing council pay and allowing participation by council members in the city insurance program. Providing for conflicts and considerability, providing for inclusion in the code and effective date. Okay. So again, this is the uh, public or this will be a public reading for ordinance number 16-2022. Public hearing for this ordinance is now open. Anyone wishing to speak on this issue can now do so. Uh, this issue is relating to council's ability to participate in the insurance program. Basically raising the benefit from last year to this year. Again, is there anyone wishing to speak on this issue? Seeing none. Public hearing for ordinance number 16-2022 is now closed. I'll bring it back to the councils. Council have any questions or concerns? Okay. okay. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion we approve item number D9, ordinance number 16 2022, please. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second it. We have a motion and a second. There's no further questions. We'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McKear? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 10, this will also be a public hearing for a second reading of Ordinance 18-2022. This is Ordinance of the City of Avon Park, Florida, establishing the code enforcement moratorium for debris and damage caused by Hurricane Ian, providing for a sunset of moratorium provisions and automatic termination of the ordinance unless extended by council, providing that the ordinance will not be codified, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Okay, again, this is a second reading for the ordinance 18-2022. Anyone from the audience wishing to speak on this issue can now do so. Not seeing any takers. Seeing no speakers, the public hearing for ordinance number 18-2022 is now closed. I'll ask if the council has any questions or concerns. Seeing none, do we have a motion? Make a motion we approve item number D9 for ordinance 18 2022, please. Do we have a second? Um, hang on. D10. That's D10. I'm sorry, D10. What did I say? D9? No. It's ordinance number 18 2022. Yes. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McKear? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 11, this will be amendment number two to Kimley Horn Post Design Services during the apron rehabilitation. Mark, do you want to, or excuse me, Melody? Yeah, so this is in direct relation to the um, apron rehabilitation grant that we received, a portion of it from FAA and a portion of it from FDOT. Mm -hmm. Kimley Horn's fees for their services related to this grant is $247,011. Okay. Do we have any questions about uh, Kimley Horn's role in this or anything they're doing? So this is the, uh, do we have any front one from Kimley Horn? Jared's on. Okay. Is there any reps from Kimley Horn online there? I'll give you the brief overview while they're getting set up. Basically, this is a uh, apron project that's at the Avon Park Airport. Uh, so the FAA um, gave us a grant with the FDOT matching the remaining funds to rehabilitate one of the aprons at the airport. It's a rather large project. It's a two and a half million dollars. Um, Kimley Horn is the engineering service behind that. And they're also overseeing that grant process. So they'll be overseeing the entire build out uh, from start to finish. And this is basically establishing what their fee is, uh, which was already predetermined. So. Anyone from Kimley Horn there, Jared? We, uh, just me, sir. For the record, can we have the name of the person and address of the person? That, um, sure. Thelma Foster? Okay. Thelma Foster, what's your address, Thelma? 
409 East Canfield Street. Okay. Jared, uh, we had a, a question uh, asking what the scope of the project was and what your what your company's role is in it. If you wouldn't mind just giving us a brief overview of that. Absolutely. So the description, as I think I caught the tail end of you describing, was is that this is a project to rehabilitate slash reconstruct uh, the FBO slash terminal apron uh, out there at Avon Park Executive Airport. So uh, basically, the, 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 the pavement's going to be, can you guys hear me okay? Jared, you're breaking up so bad we can't really understand what you're saying. Um, is, is this any better? Try again. How about now? No, <laughs> no, it's, it's still cutting in and out. Uh oh, I, I think, I think the mayor adequately explained it. You yeah. know, I don't, I don't know okay. if there's much else, much else they could add to that. All right, Jared, unless we have another specific question, we'll, we'll hold off for now. Do we have any other questions about the project? See, seeing none, do we have a motion? Make a motion we approve item number D11 for Kimmy Horn in the amount uh, $247,011. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> we have any further questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Item number 12, we have the draft airport uh, commercial lease agreement with NASGRASS, Inc. Mark, I see your name there. Do you want to give us an overview? Sure. As you probably remember, um, I brought to your attention here several meetings back that their agreement had expired and ask you if you'd be interested in a month to month. And you said yes. And Jerry um, drafted one. He, uh, we sent it, uh, he get, sent it to me. I sent it to uh, Christine at Nasgrass. They have a problem with section six. They um, are asking it to be removed. Also, I left blank how much uh, per month you wanted to charge. It was $1,200 a year, which was to be $100 a month. FAM feels that's really low. I got to admit it is pretty low myself. Um, and Jerry and I thought it'd be best to bring it in front of you, let you discuss section six and how much, if you're going to approve this, how much you would like to collect every month. Okay. Yeah, and I, I have, you know, issue, I guess they're, they're I can understand their, their circumstance, what they're concerned about is that that's an, our old dump, but they're not willing to, you know, say that any contamination of the ground is, um, you know, their fault. They're just uh, willing to um, exercise best management practices, which, you know, it's, there's no, we can't say that they are, they aren't. We can't say that they've been able to manage other people that are there, that are, they're doing it. And you dump over a couple, you know, of uh, drums of gas or whatever they use for their lawnmowers, assume it's gas, and then uh, you got, you've got a problem. With the property and so i mean that's that's a risk but which for what you're getting to assume that risk um is really off level okay do we have a rep from nasgrass here tonight okay sir if you wouldn't mind coming up to the podium there just give your name and address for the record and i would anticipate we have some questions for you yes my name is wes pyburn i'm president of nasgrass and my address is 4409 hedge drive east in lakeland florida thank you very much mm -hmm. so um it was presented to us that um you guys did not want to um agree to section number six did you have an alternative well more specifically it wasn't all of uh, paragraph six mm -hmm. it was just the one line where the lessee shall pay to the city in a non-refundable fee that uh uh we're asking for that to be removed and to be uh, our BMP practice that was in the old lease um, put back in. Okay. Um, Cause that's the only, really the only change that we saw with that paragraph. And when you say BMP, statement. he's referring to the well, he's referring best to management the, practices. Well, he's referring to the, 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 the provision that, that calls for a fee that we could pay uh, to a, um, a firm that would do the environmental assessment. I see. And so you need to have, an environmental assessment before an environmental assessment after right when somebody's leasing property and um you know the, they clearly you know um they would want to get one before but we're not you know requiring them to do that 
but we certainly want one afterwards. So, you know, I, their problem is, well, if you do one afterwards, you know, it, it's a dump, so you might have gas already on it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, because it's if it's a vegetation dump, then that's not true. But nevertheless, I mean, I understand their position, but never, but, um, you know, for what the price that you're getting, you're, you're basically assuming a lot of, a lot of risk with that. So I would assume that uh, this sort of thing could probably be mitigated with some sort of contamination insurance or something. And I guess you guys have probably looked into that and it's cost prohibitive. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's um, like we're a 501 C3 mm -hmm. nonprofit and sure. you know, we just don't have a whole lot of funds to work with. I see. Have you looked into that insurance to see what it would be if it's not as a contamination insurance, I pollution see. insurance? Yes, it was it was quite high. I see. That was, but that was a number of years ago. I don't know what it is currently. Okay. Well, perhaps um you could tell the council uh, you know, what is your fueling practice out there or, or how does that uh, so our best management practices, which is um you have a copy with it of it um actually in your office, okay, um in City Hall, and uh it, it's pretty extensive. And I keep a copy with me. There's a copy at the track that stays there and we literally go through a, something like 35 different lines mm -hmm. and um we have uh we actually have a committee that watches and oversees the track for that um we announce it at our meetings every month um we have to have pans underneath the machines or when they get fueled which is usually six to 12 ounces mm -hmm. um or do that in the inside their trailer because a lot of people have enclosed trailers Okay. So that there's, uh, you know, there's either diapers underneath to collect collect any kind of spills. Um, our oils are again six to twelve ounces. They're small engines, so they don't, you know, it's it's uh, it's just a very minimal amount mm -hmm. overall. And and the committee we have um, uh, five gallon pails surrounding the track with with uh, shovels, what have you, so that everything's available if there is a spill. It's reported to uh, to our guy immediately, and we we clean it up and just, and take care of it. Sure. Okay. And you guys have been operating out there for quite some time, right? Twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty years now. So in that twenty years, uh, how many spills would you say that you've had? Uh, maybe three, possibly four. Uh, and we're talking, you know, it's not really a spill; it's a puddle. Uh, and we shovel that up and, and dispose of it uh, legally. Less than a gallon, you're saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's less than a gallon. Okay. We might okay. go through a gallon the entire night, entire two-day weekend at, at Nationals. It's not a lot of fuel. And we're talking about gasoline, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, we don't allow. That's it's, In fact, that's one thing that's actually hurt us is we don't allow alcohol or methanol heavy type race fuels mm -hmm. um, where some of the other places are. Um, we're just not willing to accept that risk. Okay. All right. Do we have any other questions for uh, NASBIS? How many events do you usually have in a typical year? Uh, we have nine events. Okay. We operate for nine months. You okay. charge admission to your events? Yes. How much is the admission? The admission is, uh, uh, yeah, it's $10 in the, I don't do that part of it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> she's my treasure. Uh, $10, yeah. So ten dollars for the viewers. Per person, yes. Okay. And how about the people who participate in the races? They're fifteen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Children under five are free. And do you how how many people on average do you have that attend them? Uh on a regular event, on average, probably a hundred in the grandstands and maybe what, fifty in the pits. Yeah. 150 total on a on a regular event. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for him? So uh, it's been suggested that twelve hundred dollars is is low. Do you think that it's the the right price, and would you be willing to change that at all? We have some room to move, but again, we're we're not for profit. We um we try we have kids classes to teach kids about racing and and motorsports mm -hmm. and mechanical skills. And we, you know, at ten dollars a person, we just don't have a lot of money. We went from the last lease was ten dollars a year to twelve hundred a year, and that that required us to increase our 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 prices at the gate. Do you know how long you've been operating under the twelve hundred dollars per year? Uh, five years. Five years. Okay. Have you seen your attendance go up or down in the last five years? Uh, it's pretty steady throughout the the uh, uh, race season. 
nationals is up and down like mm -hmm. one year we'll get a big group and the next year it'll kind of fall down but it's 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 pretty steady it's we've seen an increase over the last 10 years for sure that i've been involved sure um there were seven people there when i started and now there's you know 150 and typically 35 to 40 race dollars sure well i mean you know ultimately ma'am if uh if if you want to enter something in the record you'll have to come up there to the microphone just so we can have your name and address anyway um yeah i mean at the end of the day uh you know we have an organization here that's been operating for 20 years they get a heck of a lot of viewers out there they have constant events i mean the more things that happen in avon park the better obviously we do have to mitigate um you know any risks that are out there of any you know potential hazards and whatnot but you know this is airport property ultimately you know it, it would probably return to airport use of some sort in the long run but as of right now, there's no other airport functions that are, you know, want it, that are that are pushing this out or that need this space. So, granting a a month to month lease, I think is is a good thing. Um, ultimately, it just comes down to price and any other mitigation. I think that the price, being it's a nonprofit and and what they do, I don't see an issue with the price. I think twelve hundred dollars is fine. Um, it's just a question of legally, should we have anything? there to protect the city or not is really my only question so i would ask council if they have anything else to add or well, just if we could keep the part of paragraph six in there without having a uh, exact fee to hold for them I, I mean i think we ought to at least hold hold them uh they're not liable if something does happen that's greater than we are, nobody would expect but we also had, you know, a great leak out there several years ago that cost the city a ton of money. Of course, that was a, a different situation. But uh, sure, I think if maybe Jerry could come up with something to adjust six that would be agreeable to you without it necessarily asking them for any upfront money. Okay. Yeah, I mean, basically, if the fee is to be used for a a, a cleanup company, the question would come down to what does that cleanup company cost um well it's really just to test it I mean, right it's the soils tests and things like that if there's a you know to do an assessment and we probably don't have any idea off the top of our head what that would be right that's around thirty five hundred dollars to four thousand but i think did you try to yeah but can i add something sure it's not a vegetative dump you said if it was but right it, there's been cars pulled out of there and old refrigerators barry told me earlier so on the testing when this is done and actually west told me when i was out there with him that when he mows he can smell methane gas which it's odorless so i don't think he can smell that but i just want to bring up jerry brought up if it is and i just want to let you know and maybe you know i don't know how old this is could have been world war ii for all i know right. i mean we don't know right right yeah i, I, don't I think council knows. needs to know that well, if they have the methane gas, I think we need to have a waiver from anybody that's on that property then. Well, I don't know if it's methane gas, but there, there's a strong odor when we mow the lawn up uh, up towards the the, uh, the hill. It just, but, it smells you know, really bad. I, I just, my gut tells me we should identify what that smell is. So somebody doesn't later on say, I'm suing the city because I smelled X and uh, it got in my lungs and that's why I've got cancer or why I've got this or why I've got that. It's it's a big liability issue. I, I, I you know, um, we need to determine what that is. I, it's my gut. Yeah. Have we had any soil testing out there? I'm guessing at no. all in history. But I, what was that? Have we had any soil testing out there at all? Not since I've been here. Like I said, they've been retting it for ten years. I don't, I, I don't know. Twenty years, but none none since I've been here. Not that section. Okay. So obviously, uh, you know if we do testing out there and there's something that's hazardous well that will shut this whole thing down until that's remedied so it'd be expensive remedy right well that's kind of a whole different can of worms i was unaware of this little tidbit of information so um i mean i guess i would ask jerry and and mark what is the best way to proceed with this potential contamination out there is this something that we need to just have tested regardless of if Nav nasgrass is standing here or not you know i think so yes i would i like to see them out there doing this yes but you know 
Jerry's big job and most of mine is liability for the city. And when he told me that, and actually I talked to Rick Reed earlier and he said, when he's out there mowing near that area, they can smell it too. So okay, it, it probably does need to be checked. And again, I have no how, idea how old that dump is, but I know there's other areas on the airport that they've used a dump too. So, Well, and if that's the case, then I guess I would say the best course of action would be to put this on hold get somebody out there to test it ASAP and go from there. I mean, does that seem correct, Gary? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, like I said, I, you know, people sue for mold, they sue for smelling wastewater lift, lift stations. They so, you know, not that they win, but they, that's, you know, something they do. And uh, so, you know, I just, um, I don't know what it is. And if it turns out to be something that's not good, <laughs> then, okay. you know, it might, it might, mean whether you actually have somebody out there at all because the remediation might cost more than what you'll sure. ever get back in sure. enjoyment yes ma'am name and address please christine smith 4409 yes ma'am i just want to bring one thing up and i know you're worried about the liability but anybody who does come out they have to sign a waiver so you you are not held responsible well who, who do you wait what are they waiving they're waving. I would. I should have brought one. I didn't bring one. But they cannot sue. They cannot. They. There's. That's not sue you or sue us. No, that's that's for anybody. The property. Okay. Or not. You will not be responsible. That's why well, I wanted to bring that up. That, no, uh, you know, okay, I appreciate I that, but it doesn't one. doesn't remove the problem that we don't know what's there because uh, yeah. people can't waive something they're not aware of that they have no knowledge of. So so you can't tell yeah. somebody you know, to uh, sign this waiver agreement and send them into a room with gas in it that, yeah. you know, it's going to harm them, you know, that they don't know is going to be there. So I'm using that uh, terrible analogy uh, here, no, but uh, but we, we still have to have some, you know, know what's going on. I get it. I just, Very you good. know, for all the other previous leases, you, you know, nobody. Sure. You know, that was never an issue. So I sure. just wanted to, you know, let well, you know that. I would ask you to please send a copy of that to the city. Um, so that we can look it over and then before our next meeting we need to get a hold of a testing company to be able to go out there um, it, it'll take longer than the next meeting for them to get it done because i it would be more than a phase one i think it'll be you know soils test or something right you know, but so also if that comes back at you know two hundred thousand dollars or something then we may yeah. want to hold off for a little bit before we I, do that everything. so yeah. Obviously, uh, we need to get a price, and um, it would be my suggestion that we put this on hold uh, at least until our next meeting so we can get a price on what it would be to test the soil out there. I agree. So, do we need, I guess we would need a motion for that to table this indefinitely. Yeah, you need a motion to pass it, not not to table it. I mean, just I, I usually recommend that you just, if you have a motion, that you just um, um, move to, to postpone it indefinitely anyway, which is the same as killing it. We can bring it up next meeting as old business okay. or whatever meeting you want as old business. We're we looking for a motion to postpone indefinitely. Okay, I'll make a motion that we postpone indefinitely. Okay, do we have a second? I second it. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McCure? Um, yes. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Obviously, the staff has their directive to get a hold of someone to uh, check that soil out ASAP. Yes. Got it. Okay. All right. Item number 13 this will be the CRA Advisory Board uh, designate Rick Hayes to the airport CRA. Do you have a question? Question. Barry, yes. You know the drill. My name is Barry Foster, 2885 West County Line Road in the yes. greater Avon Park area. Private citizen, longtime Highlands County resident, race fan. So what you did, what does that mean exactly? Does that mean they can't race until you get that's, you, you no, take action? That's, that's, that's exactly what that would mean is to postpone it at least until our next meeting so we can get somebody to test the soil out there. Uh, if I could just get a couple of minutes. I like to let I, I was here when they started this thing mm -hmm. when Mr. Eason and Mr. Macklin and gave it to them for 10 bucks a year. If they would go and clear it out, Brian Benton, Susan Benton, not the sheriff, a different Susan Benton. 
uh, Joe Gillians, Tom Macklin went out there with with lawnmowers and weed whackers, and they did drag at least one old Chevy Nova out of there and a bunch of refrigerators. It is not a vegetative landfill. Uh, I don't know what's, but I can tell you over the years that they've taken out a bunch of trees after Charlie and Jean and Francis and Irma and they, sure. they, they, they've cleared that up and they have been really good stewards of what's gone on out there. I was an announcer out there for a while. I didn't smell anything. I didn't mow the lawn, but I didn't smell anything in particular, but I would tell you that trash stinks. So yeah, they probably do smell something out there, but um, I would tell you that if I was going to lobby for something, I would lobby for you to give them a, <clears throat> a contract an ongoing contract because it's hard for them to schedule these national races and have all these reservations go, Oh, by the way, we can't do it this week, this, this month. Cause they, they, they canceled this this month. We can't do it this month. This is a really an underutilized facility out there that um, brings in a lot of people, little Italy, uh, the, the hotels, the people come in from outside the area to, to come and, do their lawnmower racing. These guys aren't making any money. Probably the only guy who makes right. any money out there is is probably the food vendor guy. He probably is the only guy that makes any money out there. Probably. But I will I will tell you that uh, if you want them to pay more money, let them sublease it. Let them lease it to the dirt cart racers, and they'll let them have a race out there once a once a month, make some money. Then they'll have more money to give you. You know, I mean, if if you want, if if you, I, I'm doing all these stories in my day job about Avon Park being a business-friendly community, right. be business-friendly, let them make money, and then you can charge them a lot of money. The more money they make, the more you can take, Yeah, you know? I mean, but, I, I can tell you from my standpoint, it's not about the money by any means. I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I've, I've, watched, I've watched these guys. You may remember the BMX bike track, which they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've postulated maybe a million dollars because no one kept any records of what the county did out there and all the money they spent is gone. It's a shooting range out there now, yep. private sector shooting range. These guys over the past 20 years and, and different incarnations of them have done just a wonderful job. And I, I, I think that uh, there's a, there are business friendly organizations in here like chambers around who should be using this because this is the first for purpose lawnmower racing facility in the United States. And you can be bigger and you can be better, but you can never be firster. Okay. They are the number one. They are the, the place where they come to race in March, which I think is a terrible time during the Sebring 12, but that's when they do it. They come from all over to come here because it's the first. So they all come, they have, they had a guy flying from England and rent a lawnmower to go racing. So he could say he raced in Avon park. So maybe it does. I, I remember when you guys went, uh, went after classic Caladiums to do the same kind of thing to have a, uh, because Wellcraft was in there beforehand and you wanted to find out what was going on. Mm -hmm. I shudder to think what's been out there since what world war two. I don't know how long the, 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 the dumps been out there, but they have a little tiny corner that is accessed not on airport, uh, off the airport property at all. It's mm -hmm. accessed off Herring Ave. In the 20 years that I know, I've been here for 35, the 20 years that I know, they've never had an incident out there when law enforcement had to be called. Now, I don't think there's any really, really bad language out there. Uh, they've had a couple of accidents, a couple of people got banged up a little bit, you know, racing for position. But there's never been any incidents out there and the people across the street don't even complain. Of course, they get free tickets, but, you know. Uh, but I would just, I would urge this council to, to, to give some consideration to what this facility is and the lineage that it has to, yeah, I'd give them a sweetheart deal. And I would see if you could do things that would bring more people and more races in because it's at 10 bucks a ticket. And the one thing you didn't ask is, how much do they pay insurance? Because they, they upped the insurance. I remember when they upped the insurance about 10 years ago and they had to go from $5 a ticket to $7 a ticket. And Wes said, this is killing me. But what are we going to do? Because it's, it's all run by volunteers. I mean, there's nobody, uh, 10 bucks a whack at 100 people. It sounds like a lot of money. 
it goes pretty quickly. And if have you ever, have any of you have been out there, I would urge you if you allow them to go racing again, that you go out there because each one of you could be the grand marshal of an evening, <laughs> you know? It, it would not be hard at all for you to get an honorarium out there to say, drivers, start your engines. Okay, that's enough for me. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Barry. Very well said. All right. <clears throat> Item number 13, we have the CRA advisory board. What is up is to designate Rick Hayes to the airport CRA. So it's come to light that uh, Rick Hayes uh, is actually more suited for the airport position rather than a Main Street position, as he is a pilot and a aircraft enthusiast. And then uh, the second part of that will be to appoint a new uh, CRA advisory board member, um, which was the applicant was Laura Wade uh, to the Main Street CRA in his place. If you'll remember, Laura Wade was someone who had put in for a uh, zoning position and she has now um, made herself available for the CRA position as well. So is there anything else to add to that, Mark? No, just on, on Laura's part, if you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, don't remember, probably do, but you would ask us to reach out to her, see if she'd like to be on CRA. So mm -hmm. I feel it fitting. We reached out, or the clerk reached out to her and she said, yes, she'd still like to serve the city in that capacity. Yep. I spoke with her um, just a couple of days ago about that very same thing. She also seemed very enthusiastic about wanting to do the CRA. If anybody knows any history on, on Laura, um, probably a very good fit for her so looking forward to having her on there did um did rick hayes request it to be on the airport and why didn't a uh, application submitted in the package why wasn't his application in the package? Uh, this goes back to a couple months before i started here we i had the um i wasn't sure what positions to which ones were open, South Side, I know the two in there. So I asked her to actually go back through the minutes instead of taking what I've heard or who's put. And when Rick Hayes was um, appointed, it didn't say which one. And, you, and we had his packet and he marked all of them, but it never designated. Yeah, right now on Main Street, he doesn't have a business anymore that was on just barely in the Main Street, but he does have a couple hangers, it was three, I think it's now two. And he's a perfect fit for that. And he, and when I got with him, he said, Mark, I always thought I was on the airport. Right. So basically, it's just moving him to where he should have been that really, when there was a motion made, it was just to put him on the board. It didn't say where. Right. I think that came down to whenever we were basically taking all the individual boards and making them into one advisory board. Um, that's whenever all that got done. So, but as far as I've known, Rick, it's always been an airport guy. He's never yep. been a right on main street so it was a shock to me to learn that he was even on the main street i thought he was at the airport the whole time so i think he's a perfect fit for the airport because he he is a an enthusiast uh, he does have planes out there he knows a lot about it and to be honest with you they really don't have that many people available that could even serve on the airport advisory board now, i mean we lost when we lost bill jarrett that's what opened up the position and because he took his planes out of there, and that's how he got on Main Street. So to me, Rick Hayes is just the perfect, it may be only fit for the airport CRA, in my opinion. Okay, so any other questions? Um, since we are talking about the CRA and the advisory board, mm -hmm. I know we're talking about these two specific, mm -hmm. but how did Mr. Uh, Bill Jarrett Ford uh, get on the uh, Main Street CRA? How did he qualify? He's a board member of a 503C1, um, the um, foundation at the Jacaranda. Okay. So that qualifies business on Main Street. Is the correct answer. Yep. All right. Do we have a motion? I recommend we uh, approve item number B13 for Rick Hayes to go to the airport and for Laura Way to go to Main Street CRA. Just to be clear, that's not a recommendation, but that is a motion, right? Yes, that's a motion. All right. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? I second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McCure? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? 
Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Resolution number 2022-30. So resolution of the City Council of the City of Avon Park, Florida, providing for adoption of a grant agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation and providing for an effective date. Okay. Mark, I see your name there. Yep. Um, actually, when we recently, during, during the right after the hurricane, we had to shut down one of the runways out there for flooding. Pam found out that we did not have, actually Mike Powell with all his years experience, found out that we did not have the, the proper um, markers out there, which is a big X about as high as a ceiling that has to be up. And David being an ex-pilot told me the same thing. So he reached out trying to find some. Um, the only ones we got were let us borrow from Sebring and theirs don't light up. We couldn't get them to work. So he got with, um, F dot and they um, worked as fast as they can and got us this grant for a total up to fifty thousand dollars to purchase two of them. Okay, do you think that fifty thousand dollars will um, be more than enough to? Cover? I, do you remember what Andy looked? Was it forty thousand? It was between forty and fifty thousand for two of them because okay. our purchasing agent was looking for them. And we thought we could get them under an emergency. Um, Fam thought that F dot was going to move faster than they were, but okay. All right. Any other questions on this grant? Yeah. Are they mobile or are they permanent? No, are they're they mobile. mobile? They, mobile? Yeah, they bring they're them mobile. out when the, they close the runway. Yeah. I just out of curiosity, how long is this runway going to be closed for when, while they do this? Do you know? Talking about the apron yes. project? Yeah. I don't know it, which one they'll have the to close. Project. but Yeah, I don't know. If Jared's on, he might know. I don't know. I this, would... this one, again, was due to the flooding that was out there yeah and just spitballing i would say it's probably going to be phasing in and out because i don't know that any of it is actually on any of the runways but mm -hmm. i'm sure at certain times it will block access from in the taxiway or something to that effect so i guess it would be a question for uh probably um gimli horn yep so all right anything else on the grant just to prove you to sign it Okay, so we'll be looking for a motion to approve and to approve uh, my signing of the grant. All right, I make a motion to approve item B14 resolution 2022-30 and approval of the mayor to sign. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any last questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member McGuire? Yes. Council Member McCure? Yes. Council Member Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Any staff updates? <clears throat> Attorney updates? All right. Excuse me, Mayor. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to update you guys on FEMA um, for Hurricane Ian. Our deadline to um, enter a application was the 29th of October. Mm -hmm. So we've done that. We're just waiting to hear back um, if it's accepted. Okay. And this would be for any cost that we accumulated for Ian? Correct. Okay. And at last um, council meeting, you requested how much the ethics training was. Yes. That was $1,050. Okay. We want to have that discussion now, uh, deciding whether or not we want to do online versus have Jerry come and give the class in person. So you said it was $1,050? Correct. And I believe the online is reimbursable, right? I don't know. Or is that that we pay? Yeah. Some, are, some are free. Some, some are free, some are not. Yeah, I don't know. The, when I took it two years ago, it was free. Yeah. Three hours worth. Okay. So $1,050 uh, to see Jerry's smiling face or the free option online individually. What does the council want to do? I'll bring... Go ahead. How long is it online? Uh, it's there's four hours either way, I believe, right? Yeah, it's a four hour class, so yeah. no matter how you slice, it's four hours. It's required four hours. Right. It's long and arduous, I promise. It's technically four fifty to fifty minute blocks. Right. And and I know I took it uh, online once before, and it it is. Sure. Extremely difficult at times, especially when you have questions that you can't get answered. The the level of training that you'll get from Jerry is far outpasses anything that you could get online. 
um, you know, even as coming from someone who did most of their school years online, uh, you still get a lot more out of uh, in-person training. So, thank you. And the questions, but again, it, you know, the cheapest thing um, for Avon Park is to do it individually online, but it is better training. So, if the council feels that a thousand fifty dollars is worth it, then speak now or forever hold your peace. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it as well. Okay, here two. I would have been fine doing it online. I just we we did it last year with right. with Jerry. So my only that's uh, my own personal my only suggestion was that at least one time uh, with every new council member they get the in person training, um, just so that way if they have questions and help them feel more comfortable about their role as a council person. Personally, I'm okay doing it online, um, just because I've I've already been through it so many times. But you know, if the newer members feel they need more, by all means speak up so i think we've heard from everybody but you is it after november the 8th the training mr Burr? It, i i can do it any weekend that you are available or any day that you're available yeah that we're both available okay i just have um I have about three days to prepare we just have to do it before the end of the year right? hmm? before the end of the year yeah yeah before the end of the year right now it's about split so so then why don't we just give this a little bit of time and see what happens with the election and revisit this later? Because if we have any new council members that come up on the board, then we'll make the in-person training is, or if we do not, then we'll do the online. I think that's a valid point. Thanks. So. Okay. So we'll postpone until after November the 8th. All right. City manager report. Uh, just a quick one on this debris um, pickup. As of yesterday, there's been 10,072 cubic yards picked up in the city limits of Avon Park, 4,800 in Lake Placid, 88,000 unincorporated, and 14,000 in uh, Sebring. There's been 2,274 loads and they now have 43 units working. Should be going quicker because the last time I spoke to you, they had about 10 out, so they got 43. Okay. How do, we, how do we contact them when they've done streets, but they've missed several spots that I've noticed? They're, they're supposed to be doing three passes, and the next pass they'll do, they'll be picking up the same. I, yeah, that's I noticed household in, stuff. I mean, there's, oh, the household stuff? Yeah, that's what the second pass is supposed to be, household, well, and, and third is... Uh, yeah, it was vegetation and, yeah. and household, the last that I, I talked to them. Okay. Right. Yeah, and, just, and they're not picking it up if it's commingled. So. Correct. Anybody well, that's contaminated, they're not. They're going to skip it. I, I saw three on the way here that were four or five feet tall four or five feet wide i mean big stuff it looks like yeah. they it looks like they did these streets east or west but not necessarily north and south yeah there's yeah, there's they, several in our neighborhood as well that still have and pretty they pretty did big piles yeah right. they just did in front of my house when i was home for lunch but they did i'm north south they didn't do the east west so they got their own way of doing it they're kind of hitting different areas in the county actually but they but did have, the, they did have. feeder streets to start with and now they're getting more into residential and my when i was down there friday they'll eventually get all of them yeah i mean they're doing it by by gps mapping so i mean there's there's not really any way to mess that up yeah actually their map will show you exactly right where they pick up piles right but oh. by all means if there's you know a missed spot there's you can call the county and that tell them about it What's that? We call the county. If if there's one that bad, you can call me. I'll get a hold of them down there. Well, okay. You hear it? You heard it here, folks. Everybody call Mark. Yep. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Except you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> um, AIP grant. I'll let um, Melody bring you up on that on the independent fee estimates. So we are working with three uh, separate companies entities to give us fee estimates um, we have two one quote in the first one is around four thousand dollars to do the um, technical side of the independent fee estimate and we're working with another company it's going to be right around the same amount to do the financial independent fee estimate okay and that's the last thing that we need for that kind of sort of yeah 
No, it should be the last thing we need. And Lowell has been putting in some time doing that because obviously he knows these firms working with airports that the engineers do this. And he told me they're scared of their own shadow a couple of them because they've never dealt with an AIPP, which we've been running into since we went in that direction. Sure. But he did find some and got them a melody. Actually, that's higher than he thought. He thought he was talking about $2,500. So. Okay. But yes, that, that's the last. Those are the, the last thing. The independent fee estimate is the last thing we need for them basically to give us this $432,000 grant, which they've given us. But we have to do it what they call manually right now, right? Correct. And okay. the um, technical side was 2400. I'm sorry, it was 24. Okay. Anything else on the city manager report? No. Nope. Okay. We do have one sign up. We have the Christmas decorations of the gazebo. I see Miss Sherry Easton's name here. But I did see a bunch of people there at the gazebo looking at decorations. So. So give your name and address for the record, please. My name is Sherry Eason. My address is 401 Lime Tree Drive, Sebring, Florida. Yes, ma'am. And I am here tonight to talk to you guys about this year's decorations for the gift book. So I've got okay. a handout for each one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They will. All right, tonight I'm coming to you representing Heartland Helping Hands. And let me get my eyes on here. Um, we're asking the city of Avon Park for $2,000 for decorations this year um, for the gazebo. We've put together a proposal reflecting our plans and ideas for this year's decorations, as well as decoration and storage plans that's gonna save the city a lot of money in the long run. The other day we opened up the bottom of the gazebo and the problem was there's been a lot of water damage with Hurricane Ian and probably several other storms, whatever the moisture's gotten in there. We've got decorations with electrical wiring and things like that, that we're not even sure if some of them work, others we can tell they are not going to work. Sure. Um, we had a small handful of decorations that were in plastic bins. Those were preserved very well. We're not gonna have any problems with those at all, but not all the decorations were in plastic bins down there. They were just laying out unorganized, not hung up. Mm -hmm. We have one pallet in there that saved a few things. We could use more pallets in there. There's a lot of things that could be done to help organize that so that we're not having to keep replacing these decorations every year. Um, the average employee cost for the city is approximately $15 an hour. Heartland Helping Hands will be able to provide a volunteer for 40 hours of work at no cost to the city to clean the under gazebo air storage area and set it up as a functioning storage area that will save money and save our decorations for future use so we don't have to keep replacing them. This will save the city of Avon Park at least $600 in wages to have it um, if you would have had to have it hired out or given to a city employee or a subcontractor. Our volunteers are covered under our liability insurance, which the city of Avon Park has on file. It does not expire till 2023, so we have that part covered. In, um, if you look at the next page of the presentation, it shows that we have broken down the budget where we're wanting to spend the money. We have allocations for everything up to $1,601. There's an additional 400. That would allow us to purchase any additional items that have been overlooked, hardware, accessories, things like that to hang things, as well as expanding our decorations beyond the gazebo a little bit. We intend to improve each year, but this year that would be our small improvement beyond the gazebo itself. Um, if you look at the third page, this is what we wanna go with this year and hopefully in future years. It's a more traditional look with the white lights, green garland and the red bows. Everything has been chosen for outdoor use so that it would last longer. Um, there would be no red lights, no blue lights to cause any confusion with emergency vehicles or anything like that. Um, it just, it gives the town that traditional look that we're going for. Um, let me flip back over here. 
The storage can containers with the lids will protect all the decorations for years to come. Using the storage bins and storage racks will help keep the decorations safe from weather, including water damage that is known to come in under the gazebo. Now we have, um, I believe Shirley is talking to the maintenance guy about putting some seals around that door to kind of help with the moisture problem. Uh, many of the de decorations have electrical parts, which I've already stated. Using outdoor weather rated decorations, which is a little pricier than what we've bought in the past, is going to provide longer lasting Christmas, that Christmas look to the downtown gazebo area. This was taken into consideration when budgeting for new decorations and for future so that we don't have to keep asking for more and more and more and more every year. We would also like to ask the city of Avon Park to install a camera system to ensure the safety of the investment that we are asking you guys to make for this gazebo. Last year, it's my understanding that there was a lot of money that was worth of decorations that was stolen from items that were placed around the gazebo. They were not secured. We're not talking about the bows and the garland and the lights and things. It was the decorations sitting around. We feel that if the city was aware that there was some kind of surveillance that it might help cut back on some of the vandalism that's been going on or that happened. Um, lastly, we would like to ask the city of Avon Park to remove three trees around the gazebo. If you'll notice in, I believe it is three pages back from the proposal, you'll see at the base of the trees, the roots they're beginning to affect the foundation of the gazebo. In the long run, that's gonna be a huge problem. As of now, it's already starting to affect the pavement that you see leading up to the back door of the gazebo. Those roots are only gonna get bigger. If you look at the page behind it, these are pictures that I just took a couple of days ago. The two trees, we've got um, one tree that's right by where the stairs are. And the other one is at the rear of the gazebo. Well, actually it's kind of two trees intertwined together at the rear of the gazebo. You can't see when you're coming down the road, you don't even know what you're looking at. It's obstructing everything. And this is one of our most beautiful landmarks. We would like to make it more visible like it's always been before. If you look at the page behind it, I have given you a picture of what we want our gazebo to look like, not at Christmas, but any other time. The trees are gonna help us get it back to this so that people can appreciate what they're looking at. They know what they're seeing when they're driving down the road. So just, the trees aren't, uh, having the trees removed is not just for Christmas. Do you it's, know how long ago that uh, picture was taken at the gazebo? Um, no, I have no idea, but I can tell you the last time I remember seeing it like that was probably about 15 years ago. Well, I just simply say that it may take you a little bit of time to get that done since that's not our property, it's actually DOT property. So you'll have to get their approval to remove one of their, one of their trees. Okay, okay. No problem. I will talk to whoever I need to. Yeah. But where do we stand on the budget for the Christmas decorations? Good question. I'm not asking for a fire dancer, I promise. <laughs> so I have a question. Do we have anywhere else we can store the decorations besides under the gazebo to eliminate this happening years after year? At Sherry's house. <laughs> I wish we could if we could get my 20 feet four-year-old daughter married off we could okay. store them in the pool house All right. <laughs> um, I mean we have limited barn space at different places I think the reason why they stored it there is just so that it would be there and wouldn't get mixed up with all the other decorations was kind of the point um, but you know like you're saying if you have it stored up off the ground um, you know, and in proper bins, then you're not going to have an issue other than somebody kicking the door in and physically stealing it. So. Well, our miracle worker, our treasurer um, for Heartland Helping Hands, Alicia, she did some mm -hmm. some investigating and she found racks that we can hang on the wall mm -hmm. that we can put the storage bins up on. Plus, um, we've also talked about the idea of putting pallets all around inside, lifting them up mm -hmm. off the ground. So the bins that have to sit on the ground, they're protected from the plastic and also, you know, they're up off the ground themselves. Or if right. there's any, we've got wooden decorations that have been donated to the city that are absolutely beautiful. Some of them have water damage. Yeah. Thankfully, I think they're still usable with some touch up. But if we got them up off the ground, I think they would have a better chance of surviving. Yeah. So some of this in the budget isn't just decorations. It's so that we don't have to come in front of you. Well, I'll probably come in front of you again and ask for more next year, but at least we won't be coming in to re ask for money to replace the things we already bought. Uh, does your organization plan to do any fundraisers or anything to 
help out with decorations in the future or is it strictly just for decorating well we have not discussed that but that is definitely doable okay we are highly motivated and we're really wanting to get we're trying to shake Avon Park back up and get it woke up again. Sure. Trying to get everybody active. And that is definitely doable. So if the city would be willing to meet us halfway with that and help us get a jump start on this, we would be happy to. As a matter of fact, I can tell you right now that Heartland Helping Hands would like to adopt that median and keep it beautiful. Okay. You know, making sure that it's always tidy, the plants are taken care of, it is groomed, that sort of thing. We would love to see downtown at every median adopted. We would like to see the, everything just brought together. And if it takes us fundraising so that we can do more and draw more people to downtown, you've got us. Okay. We just ask the city to meet us halfway and cut us a little slack every once in a while with fees and things like that. But we will make it happen. Sure. Okay. Well, I would ask um, Melody, possibly Mark, um, as far as budgeting for decorations every year, do we have anything? There's budgeted. nothing specific. I just looked through the budget as we were talking, and there's nothing specifically budgeted for Christmas lights. We have operating supplies in every department that maybe we could take a little bit from, mm -hmm. but we would have is, to revise. Is there the any way to make it like a CRA event? I know last year we did the lighting at the gazebo, but yeah. if, we, if they made it an event, could you do that? We are street? limited on time this year. Yeah. So the only issue with the event is just that it has to uh, benefit bricks and mortar. And you're probably pretty hard pressed to link lights on a gazebo to bricks and mortar. So thank you. Even if it's in the, I know last year it was at the actual Christmas parade mm -hmm. and we had the lighting of the gazebo. Um, I believe Shirley Johnson is the one that did it last year. Maybe. Right. No, there's no, there's nothing wrong with having an event. It's just a matter of using CRA funds for it is the issue. Even with like Dive and Girl being open at night and so that's what east yeah. and all so, those. so basically that whole thing comes back to remember how we were talking about the employee that would be working for the CRA mm -hmm. you have to document all that stuff and so that's the reason why the city got away from doing CRA events a long time ago is because we had nobody to actually document that stuff so unless you have somebody that literally goes out and says okay how many extra people right, did you see the survey you're mm -hmm. right okay I'm, I also remember a few years ago we were basically trying to Come up with an idea to decorate uh, the mall area um, right. extensively for Christmas, and, uh, and of course we always had uh, Battle of the Bands do a lot of volunteer work, and, and but they yep. got the they kept the things stored at city property, and a lot of times it wasn't kept to be usable. But uh, I, I think that we were looking for something to really uh, pop up the city. I, I do give credit to the city staff that did the lighting on the poles last year and, and we did reuse the little Christmas flag that we put on some of the poles. Uh, I, I like the idea, if, if there's a way that the council can move forward with this, I, I'm all for it because I think that, uh, especially this picture here, I, I would love to be able to see something like, like that because it, it could be up for you know, a month or, or more. And I think uh, eventually, Removing the trees, I think, would probably be a good idea because I noticed that every time I drive by there, which is regular, I look over towards the gazebo and half the time I can't see much of it because because of the trees. And I know last year, I think we even, the city even trimmed some stuff around the base that, to help it, people get accessible. And I think somebody did steal something last year, if I remember correctly. So uh, the idea of the camera, I think that there, if there's a way we can find money in the budget, I. I myself personally would be okay with this. Well, I, I, I'm I'm stuck on removing the trees. I mean, because this not the only, you guys are not the only function that takes place downtown Avon Park. And I'm looking at you removing trees, you moving, you removing shade. There's a lot of people would love, love to have that shade there when they having their events and functions downtown i get it there's a lot of jacaranda trees down downtown but and i honey I'm, I'm with you when it comes to all this beautification i love it i love all of it i wish we got every dime we got to give to you i just don't agree with remo removing the trees yeah the so trees are causing the rot to the gazebo because it's not allowing exposure to the sun to dry it out as it gets the moisture gets in mm -hmm. and so we kind of thought that that would help save money in the long run 
with repairs and, and all the damage that's done. Like right now, it's undergoing some serious repairs. The, it, the shade is casting right where all the damage is too. It never really yeah. dries out completely. Well, yeah. Bernice, I'll, I'll just say about the uh, the trees. Number one, the uh, those trees aren't very old. Mm -hmm. they're actually shrubs that turned into trees because mm -hmm. they were supposed to be cut and nobody ever cut them. And so they mm -hmm. turned into trees. But the biggest issue with the trees that I've seen is uh, just the fact that it obstructs the view of the gazebo. So if you think about what, what is the gazebo actually for? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a bandstand. It's not a gazebo. So the, mm -hmm. the point of a bandstand is that way back when we used to have, you know, election events and used to have public speaking events and things like that. Well, the only way, that works as if you can see all the way around it. And so because these shrubs were allowed to grow up, it just doesn't work out. Now we have these really old trees that are much further away and I, I 100%, I agree with you. We shouldn't cut down those old trees that are, you know, hundred years old, but, but these that were just sort of allowed to grow up and weren't supposed to be, you know, I think I got to side with her that, you know, it is causing damage to it. And it's something that we should have taken care of 20 years ago. We just didn't. And so now we're kind of having to live with the, obstruction of the view of the bandstand and if we did get rid of them you know it would allow a lot of other things to grow underneath of it you could put back like if you look at this picture what do you got in there you got these bushes you got yeah. caladiums things like that this stuff's never going to grow if it's shaded by trees so right. i agree with that mayor the only thing is is to me you, you guys seems like y'all making a big deal of this american bandstand ride by at any given day it's nasty, needed to be painted, even when you had the ceremony last, last year. I stood there before I walked up those stairs and I said, shame on Avon Park, took this bandstand and want to make it the center of this parade. And they didn't even have the nerve to wash it or paint it. Yeah. But you guys making a big deal of this bandstand. Well, it did and, get and, painted last year. Well, I'm, I'm sorry? It did get painted last year. Well, you should have saw it the night that they had the ceremony. I, I was there. I stood there and I watched it. I was there on the I, intercom. It, it was nasty. It needed to be washed. It needed to be painted. But yet still, they're making a big deal of the bandstand. I don't think Avon Park take care of the bandstand anyway. But when are you supposed to take care of it, Bernie? Well, you're supposed to take care of it every day. Right. But I just don't want no one to think that, you know, we've been taking care of it and it's all of that. It's not. We, I think your point is that it hasn't been taken right. care of. Exactly. Is that my point? And that it needs to exactly. start being taken right. care of. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, Shaney, uh, Shaney, 401 line for drive safe and Florida. Yes. Uh, just wanted to touch on something. Uh, those trees have probably been there 10 ish years, maybe a few more than that. That bandstand was actually dedicated, and I can't remember the exact It was either 1893 or 1896. So it's been here almost as long as this city's been here. Right. So that was a focal point of the downtown area. And what we're trying to do is we're just trying to bring that bandstand, that gazebo back to the focal, the focal point of the downtown area. Those trees, I've worked in construction for a lot of years. Those trees are already underneath the bandstand. They're raising, they're raising the concrete foundation of that bandstand they're going to start integrating themselves into the bandstand and eventually it's going to come to the point you're going to have to tear it down right so what you want to do cut the trees down or Absolutely. replant them replant them what what you either do? or i mean it'd be, it would be my suggestion is to cut them down and, and put shrubs back the way it was intended you know I mean, nothing that, that's going to overgrow that level of the bandstand that would you know obstruct its view basically that's we honestly think that it would be it would be valued more, appreciated more. There would be more interest taken in taking care of it if we brought it up to standards. Now, if I had my way, I'd be asking the council today, can we get a contract or any? Can we do it with Hardy Board so that it never rots again? Right. And that's what I'd be asking for. That's what they should have been using from the I'm beginning sure instead of wood again. I asked for it. So right now, what we're asking is if we can at least prevent it from rotting away any more than it is because the lighting of the gazebo every year at Christmas time is now going to become an annual tradition. And in order for us to be able to have this, well, the focal point has got to be taken care of. And one of the, the things that's causing this rot is these trees. So uh, I attended a meeting uh, not too long ago with a group of people that were very interested in decorating things on downtown. And uh, I think that this might very well be your first project. So I think that if, uh, you know, if you make the gazebo a focal point of all your efforts and I guarantee you there's local businesses that'd be willing to chip in and all that. So you just need somebody to lead the way and tell the city what they need. And I mean, you can very easily, if you just said, Hey, we want contractors to come in here and fix this thing and make it amazing. Then you could blow a hundred grand like nothing. 
you know, but obviously that doesn't make a lot of financial sense for small towns. So we don't want to do that. But, you know, I think, like I said, if you guys could get some donations and figure out what needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done, you could probably do it for a, a decent amount of money and just lead the way for us. Absolutely. So where do we stand with the trees? So for the trees, um, let's start with the decorations first. Mm -hmm. So do we want to uh, donate $2,000 for decorations of the gazebo and the surrounding area? And I would just simply ask um, if the staff sees any issues with that, uh, with the decoration efforts that you guys are going to be doing, DLC, any conflict there? Good idea, bad idea. Where do you sit? No, I don't. I just point out last year, I'm not taking away from this, but last year it was the first lighting. The lady in the back and the other ones did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was all donated. We didn't, city didn't pay for anything. They donated their time. They bought the material to put there. Yes, some stuff got stolen. Well, theft takes place. Doesn't matter sure. whether you put cameras out or not. But so I just want sure. to point that out. Last year it did look great. Not taking away what you want to do with it, but it was jam up last year. And I remember Shirley standing there and saying, Chief, it's she always calls me, it's going to be even better next year. So yep. I hope that because I was at the same meeting the mayor was at. And I hope that everybody on the committees involved in it, just not the two of you, that they're all in on this. So, yeah, because they, they had some good ideas. So. They actually, all of us that were at the meeting that night, and plus a couple of others. Yeah, I would be interested to uh, hear Shirley's opinion on this. Do you want to well. get up and speak? Miss Johnson, please, please give your name and address for the record, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shirley Johnson, Avon Park. Uh, 202 Williams Great Court, Avon Park, Florida, and um, good evening to everyone. And no, I didn't push them up to do this. <laughs> I know y'all probably think I twisted on the, but last year, last year was the first lighting and uh, it was an amazing job. Um, yep. No, we didn't ask the city for anything. You're absolutely right, uh, Chief, well, a city administrator. You're absolutely right, but I did go in my pocket with more than about $3,500 to get that done. So, uh, but there were other people that donated. We had a group of only four of us and we need more hands we got some hand, hands here and it was only four of us and we worked friday saturday sunday mm -hmm. and probably the day of the parade to make sure that we got that done i agree with you councilwoman T taylor it definitely if i had my way this year y'all have it knocked down <coughs> torn down and a new one built because we do need to work on that gazebo. It's terrible. <laughs> Every year we're having to do this, we're having to do that. But can I ask my, my, my partners here a question? Because I was at both those meetings and I must have missed something. Because uh, you said you wanted three trees removed. What's the third tree? Um, on the, you have to look at it real close because I didn't realize it was while I was typing up the proposal. These two are intertwined. Oh, together. I got you. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, there's only the one right by the stairs, but on the back, it looks like one tree, but it's actually two. Yeah, I, I see it now. I'm, I'm the, sorry. The, I was the person there responding that. was uh, Sherry Eason, for the record. Yeah, though. that was Sherry. But anyway, I, I do agree that we, all of us in this together, I'm, I'm still a part of this, um, but I really love the help. And it's not just their help. It's Avon Park. It's everybody in this room. Anybody's idea. Anybody that want to help. We love Avon Park. That's the gazebo right behind you. And we want to get this back to where it used to be. Yep. And, it, and, it, and we did need some more help. We were still going to need help. It has rust running down it. I took pictures myself. A good thing they didn't ask me for my pictures because it looks horrible. The wood inside looks bad. Yeah. But I think that when we get some help and we get some volunteers and we get some, some grant money and we get some help from the city, we're going to only keep this thing popping more and more and more every year. Yeah. So I, I was called out um, about a week or so ago uh, to address some issues with the gazebo, asked for my opinion on it. And there was definitely some structural issues with the gazebo, uh, which is why a lot of that stuff is torn off. And, you know, there was a question at the time of do we have to tear down this this whole steps and, and, and start from scratch? And so we we're able to save it. And uh, thankfully, um, you know, Bagwell Lumber donated a lot of materials uh, to that. And we had the city staff out there that uh, installed a lot of that. They're still working on it now. But um, there was a lot of problems there. And thankfully, it's been addressed. There was a lot of water intrusion. Um, thankfully, the stuff that was going to be done to it shouldn't be any problems for the steps any, any longer, at least for probably the rest of my lifetime. Um, but um, yeah, it needs a lot of work. 
by the way, we do have a team together. I don't think I need to introduce myself. That's coming in to help out as well. The lighting, the, the star on the top, the same people that did it last year has agreed to do it this year uh, and to help out with the decorations. But I do think HHH, sometimes I can't remember what that stands for. So I do know HHH, triple H is uh, for them coming in. It's not 4H, it's 3H. 3H, not 4 <laughs> Yeah, for coming in and say that, saying that they want to lend a helping hand because we need a helping hand. Yep. We do. Avon Park need help. Thank you. Thanks, Shirley. All right. So back to the decorations. Is that a suitable number? Do we want to change it? Are we good with it? Let's say the council. I'm good with it. Okay. Anyone want to make a motion? I make um, a motion. Go, go right ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve the, the request for what was it? 2000? 2000. Yeah. 2000. 2000. Yeah, to, for 2000 to redo the gazebo. The decorations, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. And I'll be happy to second that. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Yeah. When would um I know the gazebo is really going to be designed especially for the, the ceremony of the Christmas parade, right? But when would the gazebo be completed? Because you're going to be completed before the parade for the holiday, right? Yes, absolutely. So, Everything is going to be done. We don't have an exact time. It also depends on how quickly we can get funds for it. Uh -huh. um, but we are ready to start working on it as soon as yeah. possible. We are doing the um, Halloween uh, festival down at Donaldson Park this weekend coming up. We are available to get started on this anytime after this weekend. Okay. So the uh, Christmas parade, I believe, was it the 28th? November 28th, Monday, 28th, yeah. November 28th. So we would like to have it done at least a week before that, if possible. Yep. So that, that's all I was going to say is it'll be done probably right before the event. So wait a minute. You're going to have it done a week before, you said? Well, try, They're gonna try, try to have but... all the work of it done, but we don't want it lit until the night. Okay. Of okay. The okay. That's, what, that's what my question was. Okay. And once you light it, it'll stay lit for the remainder of the Christmas season. Yes, ma'am. God willing. Yes. At okay. nighttime. And we will be having someone periodically checking on it. If any lights have gone out, something's gone haywire, something's not like it should be, so we can get it straightened out and get it fixed. Because there's nothing worse than having an eyesore. You got this beautiful thing, and then you got half of it out. That's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So we will be keeping an eye on it. Okay. All right. So that solves the issue of the decorations. Now on to the, uh, the trees. Go ahead and vote on oh, I'm sorry. We didn't vote on it. So we'll go ahead and call the vote for the decorations. Yes, sir. Councilmember McGuire? Yes. Councilmember McKeer? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Now on for the trees. How do we want to approach that? Probably do we, is that something that city staff would want to do themselves? Is that something that they want to try and hire out? Mark? I think city staff can do it. Okay. And if not, then potentially a tree service might be willing Correct. to donate their services to take those trees out. Okay. So the first thing we'd have to do is uh, get permission from DOT to remove those trees, right? So obviously we know that we need that much. Um, so I would say get started on that. And if you will talk to staff and see if uh, they can handle that. And I guess we, they would. I would encourage you guys to also call tree services and see if they would be willing to donate anything to do that. I have a question. How did those trees get there to begin with? Were they they were planted by our city people and grew into trees? I'm sure they were either planted by staff or planted by squirrels. And no, no, because I'm asking because DOT would have to say yes, you can remove the stuff that you planted. Yeah, I, I believe they were shrubs right. that actually overgrew. Yeah, and they were, just let, they were just let go over the, the years. The technical like, legal aspect of uh, of how this process works. Jerry, do you want to explain? As far as? Uh, how we get permission to uh, yeah, take this out. Her, yeah. her question specifically was, if we planted it, then why do we have to ask them for permission to take because it out? I'm guessing. it's on their property. And whenever we do something on their property, we have to ask them. And if you were going to plant something like some um, flowers and things like that, technically you need their permission for that as well. But they're not going to say anything about that, I, <laughs> but I, they might say something about you removing a tree. So it's well, easier. I don't see any. I don't see any electrical wires around the top. I mean, yeah. I don't want to try to be a rebel or anything, but you think they really even notice? Probably not. <laughs> I'm with. I'm with her. No. I'm just. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're they're not going to say no. Hurricane and it. I got to change no. though. Yeah. Can we, I, can we trim them up somewhat before? Yeah. Oops. Oops. <laughs> 
<laughs> you you pay me to be super anal, so <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Would it be that bad if we got somebody to trim it up and they just got a little excited? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're they're not going to say no, so we might as well go through the formality and ask them. That way, we have permission and nobody gets sued. So, <laughs> yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, was there anything else to this? No, that's, nothing for now. That's all for now. The security oh, system, yeah. Oh, the, the, oh. the security yeah. system. All right. So on that, uh, we do have some cameras that are wireless, right? And is that system able to be expanded upon, or maybe our tech guy can answer that? That's something he would have to look at. I mean, if the city wants to buy more, but we looked at doing it for the war dog there and we, there was just nowhere to put it yeah, plus it seems to me like whatever you use uh, you're going to need an internet connection because I, I i do it for our neighborhood but you do and that's the problem we have ours always going down with trees in the way and this and that but probably the highlands county sheriff's office could take care of a little um, patrol there, there game, but uh, uh, what about the game cameras that they use i don't think those those are run on batteries i don't think there's yeah they are but, access but but they're um they're not I mean, somebody has to go out there and pull the chip out of them and uh then download the chip and okay, so on okay. and gotcha. guaranteed that's gonna that's gonna fall between the cracks quickly okay gotcha. you're looking for a long-term solution not to mention the fact that uh law enforcement requires a rather sharp image in order to actually yeah i mean we can look into it but it's it sounds easy and it's going to solve crimes but it doesn't always we got them over they're always breaking them off over across the street at Donaldson that we're putting back up. So some of them are used to catch bad guys or grills and others aren't. So gotcha. it's there not going to guarantee no one's going to steal area. anything. There's businesses in the area that have to have cameras. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the sheriff's I, office. Is I would think that maybe they could be turned a little over. I, I don't know. It's just about that. When bad guys are running away, they might find yeah. down there. I mean, honestly, the best thing is that if you get the community involved in doing a lot of the decorations, then everybody's going to care and everybody's going to keep an eye out for that sort of thing. And the more decorations that you put out and the more light that you shed in the area, the more visitors you're going to get and the less drama you're going to have from people doing things they shouldn't. So, yeah, I, I would just qu question you have the um, internet access anywhere near there since there's no homes there. You know, so as you're going to be able to get the internet there, it'd be diff very difficult. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure well, some of the other businesses do as well. And I'm almost positive they wouldn't mind sharing their. If you stand there with your phone on find, then you'll see exactly how many systems there are. So anyway, uh, an issue to be taken up later on. So is there anything else for the decoration issue? Nope. That's Seeing that's none, we thank you very much for your time and effort. We look forward to seeing it and bigger and better things in the future. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Is there anything else for the good of the city? Nope. Thanks for Shirley, too. Seeing none, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, please. Seeing no opposition, we are adjourned. Thank you.